Welcome back to The Breakfast. And just before, of course, we hit 9 a.m. this morning, we still have a little bit more to share with you. In the news, the Kaduna State Governor, Nasser El Rufai, has uh, said, uh, of course, uh, shared his thoughts with regards to the UTME cut of mark and the quota system uh, in the education system in Nigeria. And he says that it is making Northern students lazy. For the longest time, Nigerians have argued about federal character and about the quota system with regards to um, education in Nigeria and how unfair, some people have argued, it is to students from the southern part of the country. The conversation about educationally disadvantaged students also has come up multiple times. This morning, we are going to be speaking with uh, Mrs. Deton Ogwa. Uh, she, of course, uh, will be sharing her views on this. And uh, what next? Of course, our reactions to the Kaduna State Governor. Good morning and thanks for joining us, Deton. Thank you so very much. I'm, I'm glad to be here. All right. Um, we'll just go straight up and ask you, what is your thinking? Is it time that we scrapped the quota system? Has it outlived its usefulness, like the Kaduna State Governor is saying? Or his perspective is a bit skewed. What's your thinking? Um, I would say that, you know, uh, reading the article, um, he made an argument for competitiveness, which is what every economy needs, you know, um, a full complement of skills uh, from its robust human capital. But given that we're in a federation, you know, the issues of federal character come up because of, you know, affirmative action so that everyone has an opportunity um, to be educated, you know, even by, you know, um, uh, conventions on education and the right of a child to get educated. The challenge in Nigeria is that um, when we implement, you know, the, the quota system itself is very low. The component that, that has to do with merit is quite, you know, 45%. So that already creates a drag down. And, you know, when we even look at motivational theory, the person who, as he said in the article, who has not been given, you know, it, it's not aspirational for them. There, there, there are no, you know, there's no drive. Once the barrier has been, you know, set low for you, it, it creates a challenge. And, and he's spoken, I think he's spoken rightly. I wouldn't argue with, you know, I wouldn't uh, dismiss his point. The point is education, as we know, is a form of, you know, um, expanding the mind um, is a form of social justice. If, if, if we don't educate the most numbers of our country, then we don't have a productive country. So if we correlate all these things, it's important that we tweak the quota system, perhaps increase, and obviously we can only do that by law, the component that has to do with merit. So somebody is not given an opportunity that they don't want, they're not given an opportunity that it's not something that they want. So he's, he's spoken quite well, to be honest, as we want to advance and move towards a, a more productive nation. That's all. Let, let's go back to where this all started and um, mm. something that, of course, has been said multiple times as a reason behind having this quota system and having people from yeah. Zamfara and Yobe only requiring or, or needing to have two uh, marks in order to gain admission into Unity Schools. It, it you know, is mind-blowing if you, if you read things like this. There's also the uh, difference between the male cut-off mark and the female cut-off mark, but you know, that's a different conversation. Talk to us about mm -hmm. when they say educationally uh, disadvantaged areas. Who is to blame for these areas being educationally disadvantaged? And how come this hasn't changed in decades? Oh, um, to, be, to be candid, I want to believe that to arrive at a conclusion on, on what makes for disadvantage, you probably have to do with issues of access, you have, probably have to do with records over the years. Um, I want to believe there are some science to what, why we call a particular, I even, I, to be honest, I disagree with anyone accepting that um, educationally disadvantaged um, uh, uh, um, label. I would say, you know, even in, you know, in, in normal human theory and psychology, every human is endowed. So I want to believe, I've not read on the history of how we arrived in 1979 
on the quota system and you know why would some would accept but i want to believe it has more to do with enrollment there might be cultural dimensions historical dimensions as to you know maybe there were not enough numbers going in through not enough numbers completing if you look at our unemployment statistics at the moment you would see that it's actually the south south that has the most numbers the highest number of unemployment so you know as scientists what we should then do is start dimension dimensioning why you know, um, if we say, I've, I've heard of a recent example of where a young girl had to change her state of origin just to get into a particular university I'm working with. Those distortions have come in either the, the way that we've managed this, this whole, you know, let's, let's give everybody a level playing field, which is a just, you know, as a development expert, I would say it's a just reason to say, look, uh, you know, let's get the most numbers. Let's leave no one behind. Let's develop everyone's capabilities. So everything has its own pros and it has its own cons. Right. What we should now start doing with the quota system is now saying, look, based on the outcomes, even our unemployment statistics, it's not working. It's not working. All right. You, you say it's not working, our, our, uh, Mrs. Okwo. You said it's not working, right? And you also have, you know, reservation about the very clear ones, um, uh, quota system and the federal character um, um, system. So my question would be, do we have a willingness to address this? Do you see that as a, pos a possibility, um, in, in, as a strategy for us to revamp our education uh, system? As in all things, when it comes to the development space, political will and sincerity of purpose are key ingredients of seeing any measure of change through. So, you know, if we look at the evidence before us, there doesn't seem to be a lot of focus on education. And what I would argue also uh, from an academic point of view is why? Is it that you know, education is not coming across as being valuable? Is it that education, the utility of education itself is being called into question? Or for our, uh, after our post-colonial realities, is it that education, we haven't contextualized what education should mean either regionally, either, you know, but may, maybe we, we, we should be open enough to ask the critical questions. Could it be that the way that we've designed education in the past is not fit for purpose either regionally? Maybe we have been, we've done one size fits all. What we don't want to do is reduce the bar. What we don't want to do is compromise excellence as a nation, as a federation. Maybe what we should then start controlling for is diversity, and I think that some of our policies have done that. So maybe, so maybe you know. Unfortunately, it's we. It's also the way we, that we've coordinated some of these things. As, as we know, corruption, favoritism, uh, ethnicity, and you know, tribalism has gotten into even the way people are, are promoted. Because the thing about quota system is beyond access to education, it even uh, affects reality within the education system. So I'm afraid that's the much the time will permit us, Mrs. Okwo. Um, I'm really afraid uh, that's the much we can take. But it is always an absolute pleasure uh, talking with you on The Breakfast anytime. Thank you for your time. All right, I think the network yeah. is actually uh, responsible for um, her not uh, getting to us. I don't know if she can hear us still. Uh, we, we, the, the thing that, you know, one of the things that she mentioned, you know, as one of the things that we don't want to do, unfortunately, is what we've done, and that is to belittle excellence and to belittle merit. Um, and you would also notice that even with these incentives that have been placed in order to encourage more people from northern Nigeria to get, you know, they into school. They still have the highest still, number of out-of-school um, children. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you look at common entrance uh, figures, you know, from 2018, Lagos State had the highest, um, about more than 20,000. Um, um, other states of, in the southeast, of course, had 6,000. Zamfara was having 28. Some other states were having 50 of people who, you know, of course, applied um, or, uh, for common entrance. So it makes, it makes absolutely no sense how this has been beneficial. But now that it's a good thing that we're also talking about it, hopefully, you know, we would see some change. <laughs> Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.